we see here that God made a promise. And that promise came as a result of what Noah did. We saw that Noah came out and he built an altar. After Noah built an altar, he did something. He offered sacrifices on that altar. And after that sacrifice was offered, God appeared in this equation. He said, he now made a covenant. And that covenant is what brought about the harvest. So we can see that harvest is actually a process. In other words, harvest cannot just come down and appear. Harvest cannot just come uh, all of a sudden. It is a process that harvest follows before it actually comes. In other words, there are practical steps that we must take in order to receive a supernatural harvest from God. And tonight we want to go through them one by one as God will permit us according to his word. We need to know that harvest is a process. Look at the scripture. He said seed, time, and harvest will not cease. So the very first process that you will see before harvest comes is that of a seed. Noah offered sacrifices on the altar. Sacrifices there means Noah had something that he gave. He sacrificed something that he had. He gave it. He offered the sacrifice. Offered means he, when, you, when you are offering something to somebody. So Noah did this. He offered a sacrifice. And after he offered that sacrifice, we saw there that God made a covenant. So, the process of seed, time, and harvest follows several stages. Let's look at it. Let's uh, use the example of a farmer. A farmer will plant a seed. He will never go away and say, yes, I have planted this seed. I'm coming during the harvesting season to reap the fruits. The farmer will water the seed. Make sure he waters it. It will not only water that seed, it will prune it. In other words, it will make sure that there are no weeds or grasses that can choke that seed from germinating fruitfully. Another thing that we will know that we can see that the farmer will do is the farmer will make sure that if there are any weeds that is surrounding the seed, he will make sure that he uproots them. And finally, you will see that every farmer will fertilize the ground in order to make sure that the harvest comes out beautifully. So we can see that these processes can also be related to the word of God. Noah planted the seed. We did not see many of the processes that Noah followed before the Lord brought this harvest. But it is very, very clear according to the example of the farmer that harvest does not come by magic. Harvest comes as a process of planting the seed, watering the seed, pruning the seed, weeding it to make sure that every plant that the farmer has not planted will not choke a seed. No wonder the word of God says in Matthew chapter 5 that every plant that my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. In our lives also, as we plant seeds, there are some weeds that we need to uproot. Weeds like negative confession, unbelief and doubt. These are the things that shook the seed that we have planted from bringing 
a bountiful harvest. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Furthermore, we need to know that there are many types of harvest. I'm glad that we are talking about how to fail proof your harvest. We are talking about supernatural harvest, not an ordinary harvest. Um, in the scriptures, in Mark chapter 4, the word of God talks about 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold harvest. That describes to us that there are many types of harvest and it depends on what you do, how you are diligent about the processes we described that actually brings about the harvest you receive. In other words, if you look at your life now, you see that the harvest you are having is probably 30-fold. It's an example. Or maybe you see that the harvest you are having is, is 60-fold. Or maybe it's 100-fold. You will see that it is as a result of the time, the effort, the prayer, and the diligence that you have put into the process. The harvesting process is what brings about the supernatural harvest that we receive. Because we are talking about supernatural harvest, I will thereby say that there are four types of harvest that we can ever receive. And these four harvests, they are as a result of what we have planted in the past. In other words, if you look back now, and you see, you think about some things you have done in the past. Seed is not necessarily talking about money. Yes, it's, money is part of it. But we need to know that every aspect of our lives talks about seed. Sowing love, encouragement, prayers, intercession, support, motivation, love, and all of that. They are seed that we are sowing. Money is also the seed of money. In other words, love is the seed of love. Mercy is the seed of mercy. So every aspect of our lives are seed that we are sowing. So we have the 30-fold, we have the 60-fold, we have the 100-fold, and we have the supernatural harvest. We are not talking about the other three parts, other sections of the harvest, we are talking about how to fail proof your supernatural harvest. Supernatural harvest is an harvest, as you can see, that is beyond the ordinary. It is beyond the natural. It is an harvest that has the super behind the natural. In other words, it is a supernatural harvest. The harvest that only your effort alone cannot produce. By the special grace of God, as we learn these principles tonight, God will open her heart to receive the seed of the word of God that will be firmly planted in our heart and begin to bear forth precious fruit. In Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 8, as we can see, there are some important things that must happen as the process continues. Number one, if we look at that scripture, God told Noah in verse 15. Let's look at that verse 15. Verse 15. Then God spoke to Noah saying, so, God must speak. God must speak. You must have a word from the Lord. Before God gave the covenant, he released his blessing that while the earth remained, seed time and harvest, he first spoke to Noah. And God, Noah had God. God spoke to Noah. And the Bible said, the next one, Noah 
take, took an action based on what God has told him. God must speak to you concerning your situation. Seed now is being generalized to every aspect of our lives. God must first speak and you must hear. The next thing we know is that um, Noah took action. In other words, Noah obeyed the voice of God and he took the step. He did what God said. God told Noah, step out. The next verse, Noah obeyed the, the Lord and he did what the Lord commanded him to do. These are very critical points that we need to know. That God gives us instructions and we choose to obey him and him alone for this harvest to come. The psalmist said in, uh, in, in Psalm 18, Psalm, Psalm 16 and verse 8, Psalm 16 verse 8, David said, I have set the Lord always before me. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. In other words, everything we do, our seed, our, our money, our finance, everything that we have as a seed, we set the Lord before us. We choose to obey him. We choose to hear from the Lord. We choose to be led by God. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. It's amazing how God can bring an abundant harvest when we choose to hear him, we obey him, and we take step of faith to do what he has commanded us. Oh, what an amazing way to live and enjoy our lives. Based on this introduction, I will now go straight to the very important things that we want to learn tonight. And that is how to fail proof your harvest. I'm very sure you are very ready. You are ready to receive. Number one, we talk about the process. We must have faith in the process. We are believers. We are not doubters. We must have faith in the process. What is the process? Seed first. Watering the seed. Pruning it. Weeding it. Fertilizing it. All of these have scriptural meaning. Seeding mean, seed means planting. Planting. Planting your seed. Watering that the farmer does means speaking word of faith. Speaking positive words and not uh, negativity. And say, well, I have tried so much. Who knows if it will work or not. No, you, you choose to live a life that is embodied by faith. You must have faith in the process. Let's look at Hebrews 11 verse 6 as we proceed. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. We must have faith in the process. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. The scripture says, it is impossible to please God without faith. You want to please God? You want your harvest to appeal to him? It is impossible to please God without faith. So, you must have faith. You must believe in the process. That you must take a step and say, I need to plant a seed. I need to water it. I need to fertilize it. I need to believe in it before it works. That is the foundation of everything. We are called the people of faith. We are believers. We are not doubters. Those that believe on the name of the Lord, the Bible says, they shall be saved. Hallelujah. The next thing we must know is, after we have faith in the process, that surely when I plant my seed, over time it will bring the harvest. We must never forget to believe in the reality of God's word. Remember, Noah 
heard from God. God spoke to Noah. Noah took an action based on what God said. In other words, Noah believed in the reality of God's word. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Believing the reality of God's word. Believing in the reality of God's word. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in that which I sent it. Hallelujah. Has God told you a thing? Have you received a revelation from God? Do you think it is impossible? I tell you, there is nothing impossible for God. If God has told you, just believe it, because it shall come to pass. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Believe in the reality of God's word. God's word said, seed time and harvest shall not cease while the earth remaineth. Believe in the reality of God's word. The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. Believe in the reality of God's of God's word. The word of God says, as you give, God makes your righteousness to show forth brighter and brighter. Believe in the reality of God's word. God's word said, my covenant will I not break, nor utter the thing that is gone forth out of my mouth. Believe that word. All you need is to believe in the reality of that word. These are simple, simple processes. To fail proof your harvest. It is not technical. It is not difficult. Very, very simple. The scripture says, when we learn the word of God as children, we are able to bear much fruit. We are able to make meaningful uh, results out of the words that we have heard. Number one, you must have faith in the process. Number two, you must believe in the reality of God's word. What God says is the final authority over everything. God told you to sow, just go ahead and do it because the results will show up for you. Number three, you must continue to give. It's amazing that kingdom living is the exact opposite of worldly living. In the world, the more you give, the lower your balance. But in the kingdom, the more you give, the higher your balance. So there is, there is an adverse relationship between the way the kingdom works and the world works, we must renew our mind through the word of God to be able to believe these things and not allow the principles of the world to dictate things for us. But we must allow the principles of the word of God to transform our lives and believe in the reality of God's word. Hallelujah. You must continue to give. Galatians 6, 9, uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, We must not be weary in well doing. You may have been uh, you may have been planting seed, showing love, encouraging people, and you know, doing all of this, and it seems it's not working. Dearly beloved brethren, I tell you, the word of God never fails. Just never be witty in well doing. The Bible says, because very, very soon your harvest is knocking at the door. We must never be weary of well doing. We must never be weary of giving. We must never be weary of planting seed. Like in this uh, difficult reality, because there are things that we must do, there are processes that we must go. Because our God is not a magician. 
our God follows his principles. And through the principles of God, as we follow it, we are able to receive the blessings of God. Remember, have faith in the process. Number two, believe in the reality of God's word. Number three, continue to give. Don't be weary in well in well doing. Don't be weary in showing love. Don't be weary in interceding for others. Don't be weary in making sure that you help and impact other people's lives. It is not all about you. It is not all about yourself, but about touching lives and helping others and bringing smiles to the faces of everyone around us. These are simple processes that brings about unfailing proof, unfailing harvest that we are expecting. Number four, plant your seed on a good ground. We can never overemphasize this. I would like us to read again in Mark chapter 4. Plant your seed on a good ground. Mark chapter 4. This is one of the parables of Jesus Christ. It's actually the parable of the sower. So we will do well tonight to read about the parable of the sower. Now, uh, Mark chapter 4. Let's read from verse 3. Uh, listen and take note. A sower went out to sow. He sowed a seed. And some seed fell by the path. Some seed fell by the wayside. The birds came and ate it. Uh, some seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And very soon it sprang up. But because it does not have deep soil, it died. And when the, rose, when the sun arose, it was scorched. Because it has no root, it withered away. Verse 7. Other seed fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and they choked it. And it yielded no fruit. Verse 8. And other seed fell on good ground. This is where we are going. You see, it is only on a good ground that you can have either 30 fold. 60 fold, 100 fold, or supernatural fold. He said, and other seed fell on good ground, and it yielded increase. Some 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. Until you plant your seed. Maybe the reason why you may not have received the harvest you are expecting from the Lord. Maybe it's because you have not planted on a good seed, on a good ground. This is a very, very simple truth that we need to know. Planting your seed on a good ground. And that is why praying before you give will actually help. There are some fertile soils that you can sow, that you can plant, and you begin to reap abundant harvest. There are some ground, there are some fertile ground that immediately you sow your seed. The little that you have is squashed. That is the, it is the word of God. You can see that he said it is the seed that is planted on the good ground that bore out the fruit. The harvest now determines on the process. How you believe the process, how you believe the reality of God's word. What kind of faith? Do you have faith in the process? That is what will bring the harvest that you have. In other words, the harvest that you are having today is a function of the, 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 the weight that you give to the process. The weight that you give the reality of God's word. That is what determines the harvest that you have. The one that had the hundredfold harvest must have believed in the process 100%. Another thing we must do, even after we have had faith in the process, believe in the reality of God's word, continue to give, not being weary in well-doing, and planting 
that's our seed on good ground is these three things. You must do these three things. Number one, you must pray. Number two, you must pray. Number three, you must pray. What do I mean about this? Pray before you plant your seed. Pray as you are planting your seed. After you have planted your seed, pray over the seed. Pray expecting a harvest. No wonder the scripture told us to pray without season. In other words, everything that we do, even in our seed, in our planting, in our showing love, we do it with wisdom. We pray, we pray, and as we pray, we pray in the spirit, we pray in all manner of, all manner of prayers, and God begin to guide our steps. The scripture says, the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. As we pray, the spirit of God will lead us, he will guide us as to where to go, where not to go, where to sow and where not to sow, when to sow and not when and, and, and when not to sow. The Spirit of God will lead us. He will begin to guide us. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you do. And as you follow those, as you obey the voice of God, just like Noah did, you will receive that harvest. It is very simple. It is a principle. It is, it is a principle. It is as simple. When you follow the principle, you have the result. It is as easy as possible. Just like the law of economics. The law of economics said uh, equilibrium means the point where demand and supply meet themselves. When there is disequilibrium, you will see that either supply is more than demand. Or demand is more than supply. And anytime that this happens, there is always a shortfall. In other words, if the demand is more than the supply, the price will be too high. And on the other side, if the supply is too much than the demand, the price will be low. Until the principle of equilibrium takes place, that you see that things are balanced. It is a principle, economic principle, spirit. It is a spiritual principle. All of these principles, as you follow them, you receive the results. It is my prayer that God will give us the grace to follow duly the process in order to receive, in order to fail proof the harvest that we're expecting. The Lord of the harvest never fails. He is waiting. He is expecting us to fulfill our part and he showers us his blessing and he will not fail. His words will not fail. His promises will not fail as we choose to follow the process, to have faith in the process, to believe in the reality of God's word, to keep sowing, never getting weary in well-doing, to choose to be led by God, to plant our seed on good ground. Hallelujah. Most importantly, pray. Pray without season. Pray before you plant your seed. Pray after you have planted your seed. Pray even as you are expecting your seed. The last one I would like to talk about before we pray, because we are going to be praying tonight. We are going to be doing a lot of prayer tonight. It's a covenant renewal service. It's an hour of prayer, even as we receive from the Lord. And that is Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24. I want us to read Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24. Prepare for your harvest. Harvest is coming. Somebody said, preparation is the mother of manifestation. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. Some other translation says, the expectations of the righteous shall not be dashed. What you, what you expect is what you will receive. It is a law of faith. So when you prepare for your harvest, it is a 
It is a principle. It is a spiritual principle that will guarantee that that harvest will come. The scripture says, as a man thinketh is in heart, so is he. What you are thinking is what will bring the reality. What you are expecting is what you will inspect in your hands. What you are believing God for is what you will receive. Are you expecting abundant harvest? Are you expecting a 30-fold harvest? Are you expecting a 60-fold harvest? Are you expecting a 100-fold harvest? It is what you expect that you will receive. Finally, 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 finally. After you have done all these things, patience is important. Verse 22 of Genesis 8 said, While the earth remained, seed, one, time, two, harvest, number three. In other words, between the process of planting your seed and following the processes, there is a period of time. Time. After the period of time, the harvest comes. Now, what do you do while you are patiently waiting? The answer is simple. You continue to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When praises go up, blessings come down. You continue to praise God as you are waiting patiently. You say, Father, I thank you. I have planted my seed. Your word will never fail. Whatever I desire, according to your will for my life, I thank you, Lord, that I receive it. You will declare and say, Father, I thank you because you are a good God. Whatever you say shall come to pass. I have planted my seed. I thank you. You are the Lord of the harvest. My harvest will not fail. I thank you for the harvest. And you begin to mention the harvest. If what you are believing God for is that house, is the, is the salvation of, uh, of, of, of your friend, or you are believing God for fruitfulness, or you are believing God for, for, for some specific result, you begin to thank the Lord. You begin to wait patiently. And as you are waiting patiently, you are praising God. Every day you are thanking God, Father, I praise you. Because I am getting closer and closer to that harvest. You begin to praise, patiently waiting and praising God for it. I tell you, it never ceases. Have you ever seen a, a, a father, a parent, that the child is praising him for that thing that he has not received? Ah, that father will do more. Oh, he will, he will want to prove that, ah, I am the father. I will not fail. Don't worry. I will even do more for you. That is the kind of father that we have. The Bible says, ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. He now said, everyone that asketh, receive it. He said, who among you, whose child will ask him for fish? And you will give him a stone. It's a question. He said, who among you, whose, uh, whose, whose child will ask him for good things? And he will not give him. The same with our Heavenly Father. But as we praise him, as we worship him, he begins to do all these things for us. Therefore, tonight, I want us to begin to praise God in our heart. I know we have planted seed, we have sown seed in the past. Let's begin to bless him tonight and say, Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of the harvest. We thank you that you are the God that brings the harvest beyond our own imagination. Let's begin to praise the Lord tonight and begin to thank him. The Lord, we thank you because you are the promise keeper. We thank you that you are the great healer. You are promising your word that as we serve you, as we praise you, you will bless our bread and our water. You will take away sickness from our midst. We praise you because it's coming to pass. We praise you because you are worthy. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Before we proceed further, I would like to give an opportunity to everyone who may be hearing us tonight, it is possible. You know, there is a process. It's always a process. Life is a process. Just like seed itself is a process. The very first process that you need is a relationship with the Lord. When you have a relationship with the Lord, every other thing is easy. You just follow the template and the template begins to bring results. 
if you would like to give your heart to Jesus tonight and start to enter into this process of the supernatural abundant harvest. I want you to say this little prayer with me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for you are my God. I confess my sins unto you and I thank you that you are the one who forgive me all my sins. I declare today that you are my Lord and my Savior. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Save my soul and write my name in the book of life in Jesus' name. If you have just said that prayer, I want to congratulate you because you are now born again. Your name, the angels are rejoicing in heaven and they are excited that you surrender your heart to Jesus. Congratulations. I will encourage you to please uh, contact us for more uh, spiritual material uh, resources that can help you on this journey. You may also uh, visit us, uh, uh, visit our website to contact us and receive many inspirational resources that will help to boost your faith. Our website is theevidencechurch.org. Come. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Before we pray, let's quickly take the communion together. Communion is a symbol of seed and harvest. The Lord gave his body, he sacrificed his son for us. He shed his blood and his body was broken for us. So that as we partake of it, we renew our covenant of abundance, our covenant of healing, our covenant of grace, our covenant of power, our covenant of longevity, our covenant of mercy. Tonight, we are renewing those covenants. If you have your materials with you, I want us to pray over them right now, even before we take them. Father, we thank you for these materials, communion materials. We thank you, Lord, that you are turning this wine to your blood indeed, and this bread to your flesh indeed. As we partake of this table tonight, we receive healing, deliverance, salvation, prosperity, increase, and favor. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's take the bread together, brethren. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we are taking the bread, we are going to be praying. We are going to pray. And say, Father, every good seed that I have sown, I command my harvest to come. Every good seed that I have sown in the past, that I am yet to receive the harvest, I command my abundant harvest to come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I partake of your table tonight, I command every seed that I have sown in the past, I receive the harvest now. Remember, you have to pray, command what you want, and it will be as you have said. In the name of Jesus, every good seed I have sown in the past, I command the harvest to come. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Right now, we are going to take the blood of Jesus together. We are going to lift it up together and we are going to pray over it. There is power in the blood of Jesus. The Bible says by the blood of the Lamb we overcame the enemy. As you take this wine tonight, you are going to pray a prayer of supernatural restoration. You are going to pray that every seed that I have wasted God is able to restore. We are going to pray that the Lord of the harvest will restore every seed that we have wasted in the past in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's partake, brethren. Mm. Father, every seed that I have wasted in the past, I command the divine restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Every seed that I have wasted in the past, in the name of Jesus, I command the restoration. In the name of Jesus, I command the restoration. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
in the book of Joel chapter 2, the Lord promised. He said, all the years that the canker worm, the caterpillars, the palmer worms have eaten, he said, it will restore unto us. And we shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of our Lord our God who has dealt wondrously with you. And you shall never be put to shame. Let's declare these words tonight. That tonight in Jesus' name, every seed that I have wasted in the past, I command the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the harvest, to begin to restore supernatural harvest in the name of Jesus. Let's command supernatural harvest over every seed that we have sown in the past. Oh, Let's pray, beloved. In the name of Jesus, we command the supernatural harvest, supernatural restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be your holy name. We give you praise and all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We will now do something before we go to practicalize what we have talked about. You know, money is the seed of money. If you want a supernatural harvest, you want to fail proof your harvest financially, you have to sow financial seed. Therefore, it is a time to practicalize and Gift, give and sow a seed tonight and trust God and expect an abundant harvest to come. So if you have your tithes, you have your offerings, you have your sacrifice to give to the Lord. This is the best time. Remember, you are planting on a good soil. A soil that will bring about the harvest that you want. Now, make up your mind. Are you expecting a 30-fold, a 60-fold? A hundredfold or a supernatural harvest. There are many ways you can give. You can write a check to us at the Evidence Church and you mail it. We will receive it with all gladness. You can also uh, give by Interact. You just uh, e transfer the funds to the Evidence Church 08 at gmail.com. The Evidence Church 08 at gmail.com alternatively you can also go to the church website just click on giving once you click giving it leads you directly to how you can safely give and your giving is done and you are if you are giving through cash just get it ready and we are going to pray over here together tonight the lord of the harvest will receive our seed and grant us abundant harvest in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. I want you to lift your seat to the Almighty God. Ah, and declare tonight and say, Father, I thank you because you are the Lord of the harvest. Your word said, Seed time and harvest will not cease while the earth remains. Therefore, tonight, as I give my seed, say to the Lord, the Lord, according to your word, as I give my seed tonight, as I give my tithe tonight, your covenant of life, your covenant of open heavens, your covenant of multiplication, your covenant of supernatural harvest, your covenant of healing, the covenant of uncommon open heavens, I receive them tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive abundant harvest. I decree in the name of Jesus, you will make me a, a storehouse that will be a channel of blessing unto others in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the devourer over the remaining funds that we have and as we give, O oh Lord, we thank you that our righteousness overflows and we are touching lives and we are receiving the abundant harvest that you have for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. Amen. Amen. And amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, dearly beloved brethren, we have learned the word. We have prayed over the word. We have practicalized what we learned. And I want to assure you, the word of God says, Psalm 89 verse 34. 
the Lord said, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone forth out of my mouth. I am well assured that the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the harvest, will surprise you pleasantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us again tonight. It's a, it's a great opportunity to share the word of God together. And I want to thank you so much for taking out of your time to uh, partake of this blessing tonight. You know, your time that you have, uh, you have given tonight, it is a seed that you have sown. And God will make sure that it is returned to you in multiple fold, in peace, joy, blessing, overflowing, abundance, in Jesus' name. Let's not forget we are meeting on Sunday live in church in Surrey. Please endeavor to invite someone and come to church with someone. The Lord will bless you abundantly. It is a seed that you are sowing. As you are bringing someone to church, you tell them about the Lord, you are sowing a seed. And the Lord will grant you abundant harvest in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's uh, share the grace together in fellowship. Our Father, we just thank you tonight for the blessings we have received in your presence. We pray that as we go, the blood of Jesus will cover us and protect us. The abundance of God will overflow in our heart, in our home, in Jesus' name. When next we gather together to share, O oh Lord, our joy will overflow because of what you have done today. Blessed be your holy name. Father, in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name.